Welcome to Help with Natalie Cuomo, the podcast about a girl who just can't help herself. Uh, oh, I always say I'm so excited. It's the first thing every episode. I gotta stop. <laughs> but I really am. This week, I have a really amazing guest. Uh, she's been on Bravo Summer House, Bravo Chat Room. She's got two awesome podcasts, Burning in Hell, Giggly Squad. She's a fantastic stand-up comedian. Welcome, Hannah Burner. Oh my God, thank you. What an intro. Okay, oh. Mama did her research. Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> oh my god I'm so happy to be on and I also love the concept because I feel like I say help like 400 times a day just to myself I'm just like help help too. I feel like I'm constantly asking my friends for advice to the point mm -hmm. where it's just not <laughs> <laughs> they're like shut up make your own decisions and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll ask other people <laughs> <laughs> you're like okay I'm taking you out of the of my rotation okay thank you only women understand the use of the word rotation. Oh, hell yeah. I was even thinking like, what do guys even talk about? Cause I feel like women in general, we sit, I'll sit down with you for 20 minutes. and know exactly like who you're dating, how your health is, how your health was the last six months, how your family's doing, all your mental health, everything, right. what you're wearing, why you're wearing it. We're guys, I'm like, is he dating anyone? And they're just like, who? Butter, be quiet. I'm doing a pod. Sorry, that's my cat. She needs attention at all times. Um, but yeah, I don't understand how guys even bond. They just like give each other a little dab and then they're like, we're connected. They just like make fun of each other or talk about sports. I really don't understand. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of those people though that is... I like will dump my emotions on people like to bond, but I don't have... Like I'll get excited when I feel like someone's like mutual energy as me and then I'm like how did we get to this point in three minutes I'm already talking about like in intense history with my family but I it, it's also the beautifulness of life I think that you can turn a stupid bar conversation into a well a non-professional um, therapy session do you find yourself like feeling insecure about the conversations after are you able to walk away and be like yeah whatever Great question, because people don't talk about the after effects enough. <laughs> I feel like with me, you never know. It's 50-50. It's sometimes I'm like, well, she's going to be my friend for the rest of my life now. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I just ruined that person's night. <laughs> I, I actually have a, a memory of the other week there's this girl who I really like and we've bonded and she's been very open about her mental health on social media. And I ran up to her and I was like, Hey, I just want, you to know, I'm depressed too. And she was like, why? And she's like, you're doing stand up. You're having so much fun. You're engaged. And I was like, did I make this worse for her? Like, I didn't want to make her feel bad, but I was like, I just wanted to bond. And then she kind of was just like, mm. and I was like, I'm sorry. And I walked away. <laughs> That's on her. That's not, that's not cool. That was really nice of you to be vulnerable. And it's like, it's crazy. I, guess I said it to make her feel better. And I don't yeah. think it made her feel better because in her head, she was dealing with her own shit. So yeah. sometimes you miss, but like we're living chaotically, right? They want it to be about them. And you're like, I relate. And they're like, no, true, true. it's hard. Cause you're actually not being selfish talking about yourself. Cause you're trying to connect with them, but it could come off as like, I'm sorry, this night is about my depression, not yours. Like, you're engaged. <laughs> I haven't gotten dick in five months. <laughs> <laughs> it's not actually, oh God, now I'm just going off about mental health, but it's, this girl recently reached out to me who is like very successful and I look up to her career and she was like, hey, I just want you to know, I talk about you saying like one of those people that have it all. And I was like, girl, I have anxiety and depression all the time. Like, it doesn't matter if you like met your person or your career is going well. And she was like, wow, that was really sad. And I was like, I'm just trying to, to normalize this like fake shit of like, you see, I have followers. So you think that I've solved the world's problems when I don't. I feel like, you know, another thing I've been thinking about is I want, I personally, like I have struggled. I've been on antidepressants since I was 16. Like I've, nice. I feel like, but I feel like the representation of, of mental health and social media is terrible. I feel like it's only Ugh. people losing their shit 
And there's no one that like has their shit together. That's like, Hey, I have depression. I have anxiety. I have OCD. And that really bothers me because like, I want to see a role model for someone that's dealing with what I'm dealing with, but is able to like navigate through life. And I don't like seeing people just like losing their potatoes and everyone sending their fucking post field being like, do you see this person? They're not okay. Like I want a role yeah. model that's able to cope with these things. And then you're comparing your mental health with their mental health, or it's like these dramatic posts where they like, just like pour all this stuff out. And I kind of, people say to me, they're like, Hannah, you work so hard. Like, as if I'm like up at 5 a.m., like all this crazy shit. And I'm like, no, it's when I'm not sleeping, I work to escape my thoughts. So I'm not actually working that hard. (laughs) I just, it's all I do when I'm not tired and sleepy. And I don't mean to be like dramatic, but there is this like, I'm a high functioning, anxious, depressed person. And it's what makes me really creative, but it's also what makes sometimes the day hard. And you're right, like mental health issues do not always look like someone crying on their Insta story. It's literally someone who looks great, who's out with their fiance and they could be going through it. Um, so yeah, I love that you've kind of noticed that because I've noticed it too. Yeah, I. it's interesting that you say that. I feel like, all, like it's funny. Well, how do you feel when people say to you, when you say to someone like, I feel really anxious, I feel depressed. And they're like, but you have it all. Do you, do you think like, oh yeah, I do have it all. Or do you think like, no, you don't get it. Well, I realize how much I get in my own head about things and how sometimes I have to step away. And I, I also, part of my anxiety is I catastrophize. Me too. So I'll literally be like, this is the worst situation anyone's ever been in ever. And like, I've been in some fucked up situations, but like, I have to realize like what I worked for and what I have and like the little things that I, that make life so important. And I think it stems from, if we're getting there, just that as a kid, I was an athlete and I realized a lot of happiness around me was based on my success. When I'd win, people were happy. So when you start living life based on just being happy, when you get results, it's volatile. It is like, I have some fucking high highs and low lows. And I remember early on in my life when I was like 12, asking my dad saying, what are you supposed to think about all day? And like, that's like a pretty deep question for a 12 year old. And to this day, I still kind of, I still struggle with that. And I realize it's happiness is actually unrelated to those like sparks of dopamine it's more that like calm of how you treat yourself how your conversations work in your head each day the little things not if you've got a tv show or you got a viral tiktok video um so that's what i'm currently working with that's true happiness is like a consist. it's a mindset it's not like a one moment it's like a consistency in your lifestyle yeah and it's inside you it's not something that you have to find like it's there it's been there you have to and also even like I've recently had some like bad things happen to me and I realize it's not about okay I need something good to happen to me it's how you relate to that and it's not negating it it's not being like it wasn't that bad you're okay you're okay it's more like having compassion with yourself like bad things do happen and you are working through it in your beautiful, weird way. It's like when a kid falls, instead of being like, you're fine, you're fine, being like, that hurt, that sucks. And you're gonna be able to work through it, even if it's not glamorous. (laughs) My God, I'm relating so much to everything that you're saying. Like, it's very validating, honestly. Like it's, and I'm sorry that you're experiencing negativity in your life, but it seems like you have like the self-awareness to be able to work through it in a really positive way. Thank you. I mean, I've, I feel like I've had a lot of different lives up until this point from like being a tennis player to like, I was in sales, I was in marketing, I was in like comedy writing and video, then I was in reality TV, then I was in stand up. So I've dealt with a lot of like moments where I, everything comes crashing down. Mm-hmm. And then I realized like, oh, the universe has another lesson for me. And it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty constant. Like I've never get comfortable. Um, but I actually relate to you a lot. Cause I mean, I recently saw your, your bar stool video with KFC and them, which was really, really funny. And I was just like, oh yeah, I totally forgot. Like 
we're both from New York City. Yeah. And I think it gives us some, we're crazy in our own way yeah. of like, I grew up in Brooklyn, you grew up in Queens. There's like that outer borough mentality too. Like I'm not a Manhattan city no. girl. <laughs> I'm not okay. I've struggled. <laughs> and we've seen some shit. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it gives us like a darkness, but also like a maturity, I think. And I'm not trying to be like, New Yorkers are better than everyone. New Yorkers they are. are, are <laughs> We're, we're stupid New Yorkers. We're like, it's New York and nothing, you know? Right, right, we're New right. York tough. Um, but yeah, you have more tattoos to prove it. But I'm like, I have the tattoos on the inside, if that makes sense. Yes. No, I do feel like that darkness is like what makes us comedians. I mean, it's like, I always tell myself whenever something bad happens to me that it's just going to make me funnier. It's very hard to, <laughs> it's very hard, but I like just, I'm like, it's okay. It's going to make you a better comic somehow. But it's like, it's this really is a beautiful New York moment, by the way, with the, yeah, ambulance, the ambulance coming through. I feel like I look crazy with these headphones, Hannah. Do I no, look no, wild? you look like you look like a viral gamer who has who's like going off on Twitch. Like, but I also want to say, as a fellow hot comic, um, because we're like talk about it. Let's talk about it. We're comedy 15s, let's be honest. 39. Um, <laughs> it's hard out here, dude. And I get hate Wait, for I saying it. I remember just going up to you one night and being like, I remember some creepy comic was like talking to you and you, you can't fake your facial expressions. Like I remember you just looking like I need him to I stop. I wear my heart on my sleeve a hundred percent. And I remember like, you know, that girl code where I looked at you and I'm like, she, and I remember going up to you and then afterwards being like, yo, it's hard out here in these streets. If you ever want to like travel together or go places. But what I, but what I love about you is that you have a confidence of like an attractive sexual woman who also is just so much more complex than that. Like oh, you go on stage you. and like you forget like that you could, could bully people if you wanted to. And <laughs> you, and you're just- you're Wait, funny. I can? Yeah, you can. <laughs> like you have those kind of cheekbones that you can. Um, <laughs> but I think it's important to have show more females in comedy that's not just about like I hate myself and I'm self-deprecating and I don't like how I look and like funniness is the only thing I bring to the table and it's more like I think there needs to show more complexity in women in the public eye and I think that you're doing that and it's like what I want to do too like even when I went on reality tv I felt they want to put you in a box like are you the hot one are you the you know, truth teller, are you the drunk mess? And I was like, I don't know, like I'm, I wanna be hot, I wanna be depressed, I wanna be sporty, I wanna be bossy, I wanna be sensitive, I wanna be all of it. Um, and it's messy, but I think comedy enables me to do that more. Oh my God, you inspire, you are literally inspiring me so much. <laughs> like you, because you're just like, you're yourself. And I think that's honestly, I think that's one of the, obviously your work ethic, but I think that's one of the reasons why you're successful is because you are, you are genuinely yourself in your work. And I, people don't realize how important that is. Like that is the most okay. important above anything else. It's just like, you, you're just like, you are yourself. And like, it, it is true that everyone tries to put you in a box and everyone tries to be like, well, you're pretty. So you have to be this, or you're funny. So you have to be this. Like I recently, I feel like I'm having a hard time fitting in with other female comics mm. and I'm like, do I need to like slash my face? Like, I don't know what I need to do to have female friends. <laughs> Interesting. No, it's, it, well, I grew up as a tennis player, like having tough female friendships because women just represented to me, like, if you beat me, my dad's mad at me. So, mm. and it's like really competition. Um, and I would train with a lot of men. And I think that's why I feel comfortable in stand-up because I like grew up in a male dominated field. Right. But with stand-up, I've realized how like, this is so much less competitive than tennis where like, hmm. we're actually all collaborative here. And like, what I've learned, especially in podcasting is it's like the women that have understood me the most. And I've been able to connect with the most that have been able to like build each other up the most. But it's, it's true, I think, the, the comedy scene is so social and there's so many like social politics that happen and for me it's like 
I find I care to find like I'd rather have a couple people that I trust so wholeheartedly yeah than than like be so popular and have like every comic hanging around me right but I like don't know what they really if they really care yeah like so I it's think- like it's like you don't have to be friends with every female comic you just need like two girls who have your fucking back and because you don't know what people are like saying in the comedy world it's like out of control everyone no one shuts the fuck up (laughs) it reminds me of like when I was a barista I was like I was obsessed I was like it was my life I was like I'm gonna work I'm a coffee person what do you do I work I work I was like like, this is my personality now yeah this is my I'm like so all or nothing I work in coffee like what do you do I work I understand beans like nobody's business. I do these like I brought my best friend from going up to this cupping where you like slurp. It's it's a cupping. You basically like communally slurp bean water pre COVID. Pre COVID. Uh, yeah, pre COVID. <laughs> out of like a spoon, and you have to make the sound. You have to go like you have to, and if you don't, you're a fucking not doing oh, so it right. You're next level. <laughs> you've you've I've seen got some shit about in the coffee world. Yeah. Oh Even now God. I like make my boyfriend a coffee in the Keurig and I'm like, it's blonding. The espresso is blonding. <laughs> <laughs> you write him little notes in the foam. <laughs> Here's the penis because you did a good job staying hard today. You're in a fight with him and you do no design on the foam. <laughs> He's like, you got. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what happened when you were a barista? So when I was a barista, I would feel like I was very attached to like the customers. Like I felt like a community. And everyone would be like, Natalie, these customers don't care about you. <laughs> I'd be like, but I know all their drinks by heart. And then like, but you make their day. It's kind of like being a comic where like you feel so connected to the audience. Right, right. It's the same. Oh my God. Being a barista and being a stand-up are pretty much identical. The same. <laughs> but I feel like that, like, like with the regulars I'd see every day, I feel like we had this genuine relationship. I'd be like, but yeah, I haven't worked there in a while. I don't talk to any regular that at the mm-hmm. coffee shop. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that about pe- uh, most of my acquaintances in the comedy scene. Like mm. I feel like I would see that like with audience. Yes. But also like we see each other, we support each other. We know each other's acts. We put each other up on shows, mm. but at the end of the day, I feel like they don't actually, it's still a very selfish field. Mm-hmm. So it's funny. Cause like with my, when I came in, I was like, in the podcast scene and had been doing like comedy videos and I'm and I people treated me differently because I came in with followers but there was also like people were ready to immediately be like she's getting booked because she has followers so there's that like double-edged sword and it's so funny because I remember the first show you put me on I bombed so bad what show it was like it was oh my god it was this like cute Brooklyn show it was like Uh in, the, in a store. Oh my God. It was next I was, to the coffee shop. Yes. And I was so excited about this new Snow White joke I have, which now like it's evolved into like a whole Disney routine. But like at the time I was like, this Snow White joke is so fucking good. And I like open with it and, and I like, they don't respond. And I just start spiraling. Like I like forgot all my, I was just like, where, how do I get these people back? And it was like a room that if you're doing bad, like it's the silence is deafening. Yeah, that was and I remember room. I had like one joke that hit and afterwards you were like, it's so weird that I remember this, but afterwards you were like- it's the granola hey, joke. The gr- yes, you were like, the granola joke is really funny. And I was like, she is a kind soul because that was bad. That was, and I remember thinking like, she's not going to book me on another show. I like, like the granola joke a lot. <laughs> but I remember, I remember thinking, I'm like, Natalie Cuomo thinks I'm an idiot. Like I thought that, it, that's just my anxiety, you know? And then obviously our relationship has evolved, but um, I got really close with girls got to eat because we were in a similar situation where like, we knew some comics would talk about in our back, like, oh, we, we do podcasts. Right. And we kind of bonded over that. And it's, it's interesting. I've just found like certain people are just like goofy and weird and, and they're the ones I bond with. And it's interesting. Who were you friends with in high school? I want to know. 
Oh, interesting. Because so I do I, feel like there's just patterns in life. It is. I was a boyfriend person. I was a I was a boyfriend person. And then oh I my had god, like, I've never even heard that term, but I know yeah, exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I just, How many like, boyfriends did you have, or you had like the one? I would have like one for two years, another for two years. Like I was like, I was a I was a serial monogamous since I was in ninth grade, and then like I had a group of guy friends, and then there was like a group of girls that was like super mean. You were like, I was busy fucking. I was fucking, um, but it's funny. Cause now when I, when I first met you, I knew you were in a relationship mm-hmm. and then now you're in a relationship. So it is like, it is that kind of pattern, but yeah. it's, it's almost like finding other girls maybe who are like in relationships, um, people who have that like similar mindset, but yeah, it's, it's literally just a pattern of like ha- you have your social circle where like you trust your number one dude who has yeah. your back. He's your partner. And then, okay, this is, I'm like, might be totally off, but you know how, when you're attracted to like emotionally unavailable guys, Mm -hmm. it's because you're actually emotionally unavailable. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost like you asking yourself, like, am I not bonding with other girls? Because like deep down, like, I don't know if I can bond with other girls. Hmm. So it's like, what energy, and I'm not trying to be like, it's your fault, but it's like thinking too of- Victim have blaming. You, no, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're a fucking loser. But like, in, is your narrative in your head, like, I'm the boyfriend girl, I have a guy, and girls are not going to, like, kind of what narrative are you living? Right. Um, and then also, you've probably naturally surrounded yourself with, with some girls that are like the repetitive bad ones from high school. Right, right. That were just mean to you. And then you're like, oh, this is what my friendship is. I feel like with my female friendships, I've always had like two or three female friends that were like best friends. It was mm-hmm. like, it was almost like a romantic relationship, but like there was no sexuality or romance. Like, you know, there's just like best friendships. Yes. Same. So like, I feel like- I'm like, if I, I was a dude, we'd be dating. Like that's right. my friendship. Yeah. I feel like I only know how to, I, this is like, I'm getting so personal, but I feel like I only know how to have- I, I really only know how to either be best friends with someone or just like acquaintances. Like, I don't know how to just have like normal friends. Like I've never had a friend group. I've never way. had like just a friend that I get coffee with. Like, I just don't. That's get- also so New York yeah. because I feel like I have friends from different places that they're like, okay, my bridal showers, all my friends I've been friends with from <laughs> kindergarten. And I'm like, bitch, I've been to seven schools. Like in, in high school, I went to poly prep. Then I went to a tennis academy. Then I went to Beacon on the Upper East Side. You did? So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on the Upper West Side. So I've been to like so many different schools. I don't know my neighbors in Brooklyn where I grew up. Like, it's just, we're kind of out here, not with this like hardcore community from the beginning. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept that I'm the same way. Like I'm either every single day bothering the shit out of you and you're my person but I don't know how to have the like half-ass like what do you do check in on someone that's weird like you go out on Fridays what yeah twice a month you're like you text them like let's be I don't care if I'm not hitting up every day it's like let's not pretend I don't know I've never had a female group of friends and that's pathetic to say out loud but I really (laughs) haven't I like I've never I've never have but I do think it's it's important because I've been similar where I'll have like the two girlfriends, but I haven't had a big group. And actually I did have a big group recently and it really imploded. I'm like, oh, this is why. But (laughs) it's kind of like, I don't know, you have to, it's almost getting in touch with your feminine energy. And I don't mean to sound like a wacko. No, I love it. But it's like, there's a lot of stuff you actually can't talk to your boyfriend about that like a group of girls are really helpful with and make you feel less alone. And I also think me and you are both competitive people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes naturally girls can like sense that. And even though it's not like, oh, we're trying to be competitive with you, it's with ourselves. Right. It's like a masculine energy that people can like get away from, but it's like putting effort into like the feminine. And and I have a lot of masculine energy and people make fun of me on the internet, but it's like finding that feminine side. And by feminine side, I mean like the caretaker, of like, uh, and like really in touch with your emotions and talking about periods and shit and like really talking about vaginas and shit. And like, 
<laughs> and like talking to other girls about it and realizing like, oh, this does benefit my life to be right. around other women, but it's also finding the right women. Yeah. What's I your always, sign? I was just thinking that Sagittarius, what's your sign? Leo, we're great together. Oh, what I was thinking is like, I feel like I didn't have confidence as a kid and I felt mm. like, I felt like no one would want to be my friend. Like mm. I, so I was like, I understand why a guy would want to be with me because they're fucking me, but I don't know why a woman would want to be with me because I sucks and you don't get to fuck me. So what's the point? Why would a girl want to be my friend? And like, I feel like I finally gotten to a point where I'm like, I'm a really good friend and I'm a really cool person. And I, I would want to be my friend, but I still have like, it's a much bigger deal to me. If a woman says, Hey, your set was really funny last night. than if a dude does, it's a much bigger deal to me. If a woman wants to be my friend, than if a dude does, cause I know that there's most likely not sexuality behind it. And there's yes. most, it's most likely purely about like who I am as a person. I think you nailed it. Also, there's probably moments. Cause I know I do this where like I'll have like a slightly awkward interaction with a girl and I'll be like, she hates me. Yeah. We're like, you have a slightly awkward interaction with a guy and you're like, he's obsessed with me and you walk away. <laughs> <laughs> so there is also our own insecurities that I think play into right. it. And also like, we don't, people don't talk about how to make adult friends. Like you could in your sleep court a relationship. Right. We're like, and it's like, there's tons of stuff online. You practice it all the time. Also, like, it's clear what two people are trying to do. Where with another girl, you're like, what are we trying to do here? Like, if we're not trying to become best friends, like, how do we stay in touch? It, there's no, like, right way about it. And it takes yeah. two people really being confident that the other person wants a friendship. But also, what does friendship even mean? It sounds exhausting. It sounds intimidating. It sounds complicated. Yeah. So, like, your emotions are all valid. And I completely understand them all. Um, <laughs> they just they make sense and I think the comedy but the comedy world you're also like you need that female energy with you or you're just like you need to feel supported like yes you to feel you like feel fully yourself it's so it's like I notice and this is so fucking petty but it's like yeah. if I post a stand-up clip like I posted one last night it did well but probably four comics liked it it's like yeah. this weird thing of like if I post a hot photo of myself probably like hundreds of comics are liking it. And it's like, I don't know why can't you just support my comedy? Like, it's not, I know that you, even if you don't think I'm funny, I know you like other comic stuff that you don't think is funny. So it's like, why, why, I don't know. It's just like this weird, like, I just want to feel support. Like I'm headlining in Santa of New York. I'm really excited about it. And like, I literally was thinking about like, I want to put, I want the host and the feature to be people that are funny, but above that, honestly, I want people that I feel like are going to support me and bring good energy to the space. And that's like how I picked yes. the people that were going to be there because I want to feel like supported and it's weirdly hard to find in a genuine way. Also, if you're a sensitive person like myself, yeah, you can feel people like you feel their energy and you could feel if they're not comfortable there with you, or you can feel if they're like in their own head or they're like not really rooting for you. Like it's so easy to feel that energy from people. I also was joking recently with some comics how since I've like gained some like fame and I'm putting that in like quotations because like everyone's famous to an extent nowadays, but like I've never had more girls want to be friends with me. Hmm. And it's really weird because I was that girl at a party that was like, I wasn't like the prettiest or the hippest or the coolest or the richest or the smartest. Like I, there was no reason for a girl to social climb me. So when I'd be at these like cool parties, I'd have to like find the one other girl who's like, this party sucks, right? And I'd be like, yeah. And we'd like bond over that. Like me and you, like we're already like, we've done yeah. this before probably. So then to like be on TV and have so many women just come up to me and be like, I wanna be your friend. It's so weird to me. Like I almost feel like a hot guy where I'm like, oh, this is how, like girls will get nervous to talk to me. But it's so weird because I went from literally being just like a regular kind of loser to then every single girl wants to be friends. And it's like, I miss this like authentic period of like trust with other mm -hmm. girls. And I'm not trying to like, oh, they're using me, but it's just weird how well, like- they are, but yeah. There's like a, a social thing that suddenly I go from no one wants to be my friend to every girl wants to be my friend. And I joke with the male comics. I'm like, if I was a guy, I would get so much pussy. Um, but I, it, cause it's like a weird, like they're like nervous in front of you. They're not being themselves. <laughs> they don't, they're like trying to invite you to go out afterwards. And you're like, this is a weird courting thing we're doing. Um, so I've also lost that kind of like 
random person that I just know wants to be my friend just because who knows why anyone wants to be anyone's friends it's like an energy it's like a feeling it's interesting because like you're you're beautiful like you're a very attractive female and thank you um it's it's interesting like why do you feel how do you feel like you cultivate a female audience because I went my Instagram stats six percent women follow me okay shut the fuck up Natalie yeah yeah. shut the fuck up because also your humor (laughs) is just like so good and positive and important for women don't know how to get women to like I get it I post sexy photos and Mm -hmm. I'm sure that women are like okay I don't want to see this but also like I just don't know like how do I get it's funny though because like I do want to see your sexy photos like because I feel like there's like an edge to them like you're not just putting your butthole in people's faces like right I'm kind of like I watch as like an aesthetic. I'm like, oh my God, that aesthetic is so hot. Like it's like cool and vibey, but also I appreciate like weird New York women. Um, It's hot. I think it's, it's you, it sounds corny, but it's like, you have to think of what your brand is and people put you in a box and they make it really, really simple. So if people look at your page immediately, they're like, she's hot and she's funny. And it's almost like you, oh, you keep pushing those stand-up clips and you speak like you're speaking to your best friend in your captions, mm-hmm. not like you're speaking to the 94% of men who follow you, which is weird. Like, it's hard to then be like, okay, why would they want to follow me? But like, when I'm writing my captions and I'm writing my tweets, I'm writing it to like, what would make my girlfriends laugh? Mm-hmm. And I have, it's crazy. I have like 90% female, but I also like, rarely post photos of me looking hot and that's my own thing where I like I almost am like not like insecure but I'm just kind of like I don't I don't I don't feel comfortable with my like being sexy as like what I'm putting out there Mm. and that's just my own what do you mean I feel like I think it's just also like growing up being hot was never something that I was valued for like because I was an athlete it was always like is Hannah doing well in school is she doing well in sports so that's what my ego is attached to Mm. so in terms of my Instagram my ego is attached to is Hannah being funny and is she being successful where Mm. I think if you grew up and people were like you're so pretty you're so pretty or like guys like you a lot then your ego is attached to like am I still pretty am are guys still liking me um and it's and also it's not just one thing it's multiple facets But to me, like, I'd rather, I guess my ego is connected to, do people think I'm, like, funny and successful? Mm. And it's given me, like, confidence in my body because I don't put it so much pressure on myself. And I just don't put a lot of pressure on my looks. Um, And I also, deep down, I'm like, I don't think people would really follow me for my looks. (laughs) Not that I'm ugly. Not that I'm ugly more just like it's never something that I like my parents my they never were like you're so pretty or like and not they also never called me ugly it just wasn't something that was a value in my family which to an extent like I kind of like because yeah my day will never be ruined because like I feel like I look ugly I'm just like okay well at least like I have a good personality (laughs) I would way rather be confident in people following me for my personality than I mean I, it's like anyone who hears me saying that would be like, then why'd you build a following around? It feels like I built a following around my looks, which I didn't I really didn't try to, but it's like. But also you're, I, I say aesthetic, but it it's is like an you express yeah. yourself through your body. Yeah. And it's like so confident, so hot. And like, I mean, I can't wait to have you on my podcast, Burning in Hell, to like even delve deeper <laughs> about like your tats and all that. Like you're, that's how you're expressing yourself. But I also think, if you want to target more women, cause like when you talk on stage, like, I'm just like, yes, yes. Like it's such a confident, funny, cool, but also like very nuanced, complicated perspective. I mean, even just your like mask joke about the period, I was like, yes, this needs to go viral. <laughs> so I think you, if you want to show that side to you, you have to put it out there more. Um, but it's also like, if you post a body pic and it does great, it's natural to be like, okay, so I'm gonna post more of those. And also you love it and you enjoy it. Um, And it's some, 
like not everyone I remember being like do you like model because you're like actually good at it it doesn't look like you're getting lucky on photos and you were like yeah and I'm like okay like I personally can't take myself not seriously enough, but like I can't do it I just can't do it <laughs> um where you know how to show your body in a way that's like I don't know it's powerful thank you yeah thank you but I also think little things like just giving your captions a voice like you're speaking to a female best friend mm -hmm. is going to naturally start attracting and you're going to lose some men and you have to be yeah. okay with that I would I mean it's totally fine with me it's just like you were like, how, how do we men do are also, they're mean. I mean, they're mean too. Like they're, oh, they're nag. Like, I mean, everyone's, everyone's mean. So women are mean, men are mean. It's fine. Yes. It's just like, I really like in Tampa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so grateful that people came out, but also the number of, I don't even want to say this because there's nothing wrong with it at all, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of guy. It was a lot of single dudes. And it's like, I want, I, here's what I don't want. I don't want someone coming to a show because they think that I'm going to go on a date with them. And I don't want someone coming to a show because they think I'm hot. I want someone coming to a show because they think I'm funny. And it's like, cool. She's also nice to look at, but I don't want that to be like the draw for my comedy. If it's like um, the draw for my modeling, fine. But like, yeah. But I also think you're very, we have to go back to like what you are. You're right. not just funny. You're not. Right. Like you are all these other things that make people like you. And it's like people come to my comedy shows because they like like my podcast. They saw me on TV. They like my Instagram. And then once I get them there, then I try to convert them to my comedy fan. Right. right. So that's like like because they're listening. They're not just like staring at your tit the whole time. I love how I just said one tit. Just one tit. Just one. The other one's smaller anyway. Uh, mine. The, mine. Everyone my has right a one favorite is tit. Yeah. Everyone has my a right favorite one. Uh, so I do think it's like you leaning into it and be like, yeah, I am hot. And guys will come to me. like, people will be like, Hannah, all these girls come to your shows. And I'm like, yeah. So what, is their money not as important as men's money? Do girls I mean, not understand comedy? Guys would be like, oh my God, that crowd was like really good. And I'm like, yeah, women have a sense of humor too. I love, <laughs> I love that you have a female lot. I mean, it's so cool. I like to brag. I'm like, my female audience is like successful and hot and smart. Like I brag about them. The other thing is I like that you, so I, okay. I've said this before, but not, not in this conversation, but in ninth grade, like I was picked on so much by people, but this, I was dating for like two months, this guy, Sam, if you're listening, he's not, but I, I will never forget him saying to me like, uh, oh my God, Natalie, you look so much better with eyeliner on. And like, I have worn eyeliner every single day since ninth grade. And now I'm just used to seeing my face. Like I literally like this year, I started leaving my house without wearing eyeliner, but like, I don't know. And I, there's, I don't know if I will, I have one TikTok video without makeup, but like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to a place where like, I want to feel comfortable with myself without makeup. I feel like that's also important just like, because it's another side of vulnerability. It's like, I also like, I'm pretty without makeup. I think I look better with makeup, but it's just like, I, it's- I'm obsessed with this yeah. journey for you. <laughs> I'm about to take your ass under my wing. And oh my God, it's funny. Cause I remember seeing a photo of you with, without your eyeliner. Cause I love cat eye too. It is my, I love it. Yeah. And I, so I was able to be like, oh, she has no cat eye on. And I remember thinking like, look at her like eyelids. Like, look how they like actually are. This is the thing. You're so comfortable with, your face looking a type of way. Right. I joked about it like during quarantine. You know how like if you have your nails done all the time, mm -hmm. like that's how your nails have to be. And when right. you first take it off, you're like, ew, look at my bare nails. <laughs> but if your nails are always bare, you like really are confident in it. It's almost like during quarantine, I joke like we weren't wearing makeup and we just stared at ourselves and you were like, I kind of like that little mole rat looking back yeah, at me. It's you true. get used to it. And I almost feel like your eyeliner is almost this like, shield of like protection from like the vulnerability of like it's so funny like oh really people aren't going to think you're hot if you don't have a black line over your eye it, it's true like they that's won't. insane like, and what? this fucking ninth grader like obviously like because of society like you looked fancier right. you looked like a little more right. like what he sees on tv of these women who have their face done all the time like it's natural that he thought it was attractive right but um 
it's funny because like I even find it like my boyfriend I feel comfortable with him like whatever but like he's on his way home and I'm like hmm I want to get ready for bed but when he comes home I want to be wearing makeup but it's like Natalie no he's your boyfriend like he thinks you're pretty without makeup like, well you guys like, are so early bad. on it's which early is on. like you still care yeah but still <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't I really should feel like he's still like you know it's what I mean funny, my fiance will like we'll be like gonna go to brunch and I look a mess and I'll go and I'll put some mascara on he's like why are you putting makeup on and I'm like because I want to like not look like I just rolled out of bed like it's out of respect for the restaurant and he's like you don't need it you don't need it but that's also like his specific like attitude with stuff it's also experimenting with yourself mm-hmm. and being like okay maybe I'll just put eyeshadow on today and also I see it as like an aesthetic like you know when you see some I'll see some girls online and it's like almost confident that they're not wearing it yeah I'm like that's hot it is and hot. then I, recently I've actually started like I'll go to the club without <laughs> we say the club and I talk about party like a, a stand-up club That's and I'll club? just put mascara on right and like a lip so it's like almost just like, experimenting and seeing how people are treating you the same externally and you know people treat you different if you're wearing like a tight outfit or what but like I'm telling you the eyeliner versus no eyeliner people are not going to treat you differently hmm and I but it's like it's it's challenging yourself it's challenging yourself and but I love that you're, you're I've only done stand up I did stand up one time with no eyeliner once and it was in Los Angeles I didn't think it was gonna go up and it was I did like a one minute competition thing mm-hmm. I won but it was I mean it was like it wasn't Los Angeles it was like an hour from LA they we were like, like okay she is the funniest but not sure what's going on with her eyelids right now it <laughs> looks like she needs eyeliner no I also think it's it's you experimenting with like expressing yourself right like for example like do you think if you didn't have tattoos people would like you wouldn't feel a type of way like people wouldn't know you're tough or cool I feel like my tattoos are just like they're just like who I am like I feel like you know it's funny because I I do feel like obviously I'm a very privileged person but I because like whatever we all are if it's mm-hmm. in this position but like I feel like I really have been through a lot of shit that I genuinely have never publicly talked about and haven't told like a lot yep. of people that I'm close with about and I feel like I feel maybe angst or like pride around like some of the darkness that I've endured and I feel mm. like my tattoos are a little bit of a way of expressing that yes yes and I do think oh my god you're fascinating you're fascinating I I do this is fascinating I do think with like discovering like what beauty is right like beauty is not just like aesthetically being cool of your eyeliner it's also how you carry yourself yeah and who you are and that depth of like shit you've been through that like eyeliner no eyeliner people are going to feel that energy I always say like people don't remember what you said or even like what you really looked like they remember how you made them feel yeah so it's I like mean when, totally yeah. yeah like when I walk into a room sometimes I joke I have I have a joke about how I have reverse body dysmorphia like I think I'm way hotter than I am where like I don't even look in the mirror sometimes and I'll just go somewhere and in my head I look like the hottest picture I've ever seen of myself that's just how I look when it's like I'm not wearing makeup <laughs> but I just like think I look that way Right. And that's like psychotic. And I don't know why I think like that, but it's really just how you carry yourself. It's almost like there's a story about like Marilyn Monroe, how she'll be like walking around New York and no one will notice her. And she's not wearing that much makeup, whatever. And then she'll be like, watch. And she'll start walking like Marilyn Monroe. And suddenly people start recognizing her. And it just shows how like there's so much more about your aura and your energy than like the little details of your face. And also like, you're not pretty because of eyeliner you're pretty because you're Natalie. I need to work on the confidence. I feel like there's been so much value put on my looks and yes. it's, it's cool. I, I like it. I'm, I'm grateful for it. I want to use it. I think I want to use it towards whatever I want, but it's also like your looks are a double-edged sword. It is. Cause then you just feel very insecure. You feel like you're, lo- you're like, what if I, what if my, I was like, what if I got hit by a car? Like how would I lose everything? <laughs> like- it's like the TikTok where it's like, would you love me if I was a worm? <laughs> but, but you said it before. You're like, I know why guys like me. Cause I'm right. hot. Why right. would a girl like me? And that right. is literally like 
so, like the most important thing that you said today right where it's like you having to realize like why do you like yourself right it's definitely not because I'm hot you're not, not like yeah I mean well you probably like have confidence because you're like well I love that I'm pretty but it's right, like but it's you like knowing I, I, yeah more that I you mean, bring to the table to- I'm- and you knowing Instagram being like yeah you guys follow me but there's millions of girls that don't even know my name yet that are going to and they'll see I have a following so it'll help from the men thank you but they're going to discover me and fall in love with me for being I mean, Natalie to be fair there's millions of girls that are hotter than me, the same level of hot as me, like that post photos on Instagram, they don't have the following that I do. It's not just that I like, I'm attractive and post attractive photos. Like no. I'm a business person. I do believe I show my personality behind things. Like, I feel like, I just feel like it's a level of, um, vulnerability and like being personable that like, I'm trying that I've tapped into that. I feel like other people, are, I mean, like, I, I definitely feel like I'm like being myself in a way yes. that it's not just like blanket photos. I mean, to some people, it probably no, is. No, you but... are. Well, that's why I enjoy following you because right. I see it as like, it's Natalie's unique like way of being herself. But also let's be honest, I don't know the extent of it, but like you were bullied a lot. And like <laughs> talk about bullying so like lackadaisically, like everyone's right, right. bullied. Bullying is trauma. It bullying, is, yeah. especially as a kid is and like New York kids are fucking mean, like next level with their <laughs> the shit they do. And like, I was bullied too as a kid. And it was also like, we were being bullied cause we kind of were shining. Mm-hmm. So when you're being bullied and people are telling you to dim your light, like that fucks you up. Cause you're like, wait, I was just being myself. And like in high school, like I like, it. it changed. Everyone made fun of me for having a high voice. I started like talking lower, like my voice <laughs> is different. I would like walk around like this. I was like, so I was like, Hey guys, how are you? And then like everyone from like camp was like, Natalie, why are you talking like that? And I was like, Oh, this is me now. I went through puberty. (laughs) Oh my God. But it it makes sense that like you, but also back to what we were saying earlier, you're not about to go on Instagram and have these long like paragraphs of you being vulnerable and freaking people out. That isn't necessarily true either. Like, it's like a lot, like, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect about like we get it you've been through shit um but I I do think it comes from just finding your circle and your circle doesn't have to be big it's so funny because when I like when I was in middle school like I I was like pretty happy mm-hmm. and my parents like I was a musical theater kid my parents mm-hmm. like they were like you're the pe-. I was the lead in all the musicals they're like you're a star you're a, our little 80 Annie like whatever right and so then I get bullied so hard in ninth grade that I feel like I go home and I'm like you guys fucking lied to me. <laughs> lied to me. I suck. And you pretended that I didn't. I don't trust you. I, I don't trust your judgment. <laughs> I was supposed to trust my own family now. But but the reality is, is they were right. Like, but I mean, obviously as millennials, it's like, you're the most special. Like we're not the most special, but you were talented. Clearly. It reminds me of when I, I went to a new school. I went to a lot of different new schools and that's traumatizing. Cause you're like the only new kid right, in the school yeah. ever knows each other. And I was like freaky athletic as a kid. Like I'm not trying to brag, but like I was weirdly athletic. I had like a huge cat. I still have huge. It was just genetic. Anyway, that's awesome. I, I joined the basketball team and there was like a girl who was like the star of the basketball team and I joined and the first game I scored like 25 points and all her friends like guys and girls afterwards literally were like chanting ball hog in my face when in my head I was just trying to impress my dad who was like putting pressure on me to like do well because we'd been training for a while and I was like this is my chance and our team won I did well (laughs) granted the girl probably got less playing time because I was in and they and I was like, wait, so people are mad because I did well. And it's so confusing for a kid. It is. And then you like start putting up, like, be like, okay, do I do less? Do I do less? Yeah. Um, but I also think like you're on this beginning of your journey with I, I know that you've been doing comedy for a while, but you're like getting serious momentum now and and you're realizing trends and what people want and what people are doing, and it's like keep you you're on the right path and you're gonna find the people who connect to you but also like manifesting that you want female friendships is helpful too not just being like uh like fuck female friends I do like, feel like down I've, I've had ang- I mean I've, I haven't talked about this on this podcast you'll never believe what fucking happened Hannah you won't believe this and I will say it here 
this comic <clears throat> being bullied by women is triggering for me. This comic sent me accidentally sent me an ugly photo of myself that she meant to send to someone else. Was it like an Instagram photo? It was a screenshot that a photographer, a comedy photographer posted. And we're like, not close like that. Like we're not, I wouldn't send my best friend an ugly photo of themselves, but I certainly wouldn't send like a friend slash acquaintance, just like an ugly photo. Oh no. I so just she's like, definitely sending it to someone else to like make fun of you. Yeah. It was just like, it was just bizarre. It was bizarre. I was like, it was a, it was a straight up ugly picture of me. So she sends it and I was like, and then she sends like a paragraph being like, you are so pretty, but this is one of the worst photos of you I've ever seen. Like, it's just not a good picture, but like, you're so pretty. And I was like, and it just like that feeling of like, okay, like people in the community are like feeling negatively about me and, or like, I don't know. It's like, it shouldn't let it get in my head, but it really mm-hmm. does. And and then I didn't respond. And then she said something else. She like invited me to something. And I'm just like, okay, bitch, I get it. Like you meant to talk shit about me to someone else. You were thinking my name. So you press Natalie. Like I, it's fine, but it's like, thank you for showing me your true colors. I'm not going to confront you, whatever, but it's just like this feeling like, I guess, yeah, what I've been putting out there is like, I feel excluded by women and I should be putting out there. Like I feel love for women. And like, I, I want these relationships. But it totally women. makes sense why. Yeah. It totally makes, but it's also like manifesting the kind of female friend you want. Right, too. right. I don't want and, that person as a and friend. And believing of that it's out there where it's not. And sometimes it's hard, but it's like a lot of the time for me, my best female friends are not the ones that are like the coolest and the most popular and like that everyone likes. Right. Because it yeah. turns out those people, I'm very, they're like, not everyone likes me because I'm like pretty authentic to myself where I, that could be triggering to some people. That's right. What I tell myself. <laughs> I'm like, that's what they don't like. I'm just so myself. But the, it's like the popular table is like, a lot of time mean a lot of the time just like talk about other people a lot of the time like not as fun as like below deck almost I like to call it yeah yeah yeah. so it's like you manifesting like not being in with like I don't even know like the clicks of comedy to be honest because I don't give a fuck but I love that yeah I'm also in a position though where like because I have a following I haven't had to suck any dicks and I did it my own way. And it's like, for anyone to talk shit, I'm like, you put your personal life out there for three years to get criticized by everyone for three years because it's really hard. <laughs> um, so for me, I don't know the clicks and I only want to vibe with people who, and also, oh, okay. As someone who just got like brutally bullied by a click, people be like, oh, they're jealous of you. And that doesn't make you feel better. It It didn't make me, it makes me feel like, okay, well I've been, I got fucked by them because they're jealous of me. So that I'm supposed to feel good about that. I'd rather have them not be jealous of me and not get fucked by them. Also, like I knew they were jealous of me. I don't fucking care. That doesn't make it better. Yeah, cool. They're jealous of me. Good. Whatever. And it's like, so what? I'm supposed to dim my light or what? Like I can't fix that. So it sucks, but it's, it's literally the universe like pushing you into like a different path where it's like, honestly, surrounding yourself with people who are jealous than you, they're like a, a sand, whatever. Like they're sucking you down in their level. Those people are not gonna be successful. They're just sitting around right. like, and they clearly don't have confidence in themselves. You wanna like, like I'm good friends with fucking Alex Cooper of Call Her Daddy, mm-hmm. who everyone is jealous of. And I literally, I'm just like, so proud that I surround myself with people like her who are just awesome yes and like I'm not and it's so funny because there are so many popular clicky people that will talk shit about me when I'm like well my very good friend just made 60 million dollars being authentic to herself and I tell her when I feel bad when people talk shit about me online I tell her I look at her podcast reviews because they're so horrible and I know what an amazing person she is. Yeah. And it makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, like when I was a stand-up club, it's not, it's like how many people are going to say I'm not funny. Like that's, it's like, it's people are so mean. People are so mean on, that's the last episode I did was literally about online trolls, but it's like, if people are so, it's, it's true. I mean. Cause the cool, what people like to do is they're not going to hate on anyone who isn't doing well. No. Like I've experienced it in like a reality TV world where I got a lot of popularity and then enough people were like, it's time to take Hannah down. And I wasn't aware of it. And it right. was 
bad like yeah. online campaigns like horrible shit and in my head I'm just like why well, I'm being bullied but in their head they're like oh this girl was doing well so me take that away from her where in my head I'm not doing well I have goals that I'm trying to reach that I haven't hit at all right so I mean that kind of shit is like you don't have to win those girls over at all fuck those girls and right. there's a lot of so it's in the meanest way it's the universe like pushing you away from it and I do feel like there's a there's a community of women that like are not competitive with each other. And like, I want to be surrounded by women that other women are jealous of. Me too. I I've been thinking like, I want to surround myself with people that inspire me that will make me want to be better. Like talking to you or like other people in my life. I want to be around people that like, I have a conversation with them and I'm like, okay, like I feel inspired. Like I, like, I don't feel competitive with successful women. I feel inspired by them. And I think that's yeah. like, a diff that's like a difference. Right. So it's like, I work with someone like if I'm having a conversation with someone I'm like oh okay I want to do what they're doing but I know that we're different like if you get you know if you get a fucking Netflix special tomorrow that mm -hmm. does nothing to do with whether or not I'm going to get a Netflix special and I, I mean, don't know why people don't realize that it's funny because so, as like a girl who has like long brown hair and like who shows <laughs> her curves on stage right sometimes I'll feel kind of lonely like I'm fighting this battle for like any like feminine looking girl right and then when I'll see you at a club I almost feel like like we're here right like we are here we've arrived we don't have to I don't like Natalie proved herself so I don't have to prove myself as hard because I'm like yeah hot women can be funny it's funny you, yeah you know? I had this moment this is like so lame that I'm even like saying this, but I was like leaving the stand and you, you Ashley from girls got to eat. I was like walking mm -hmm. out of the stand and she just goes, Natalie. And I was like, what? She's like, just want to say hi. And I was like, hi. And I was like, that is so nice. I mean, it's like sad how the smallest thing like that literally like made my, I was like, that's but so guess nice. what? Yeah. Guess what? Ashley's so confident in herself. Yeah. There's a reason why she said hi to you because yeah. she thinks you're cool and she's not trying to make you feel bad. Yeah. Cause she doesn't feel, she doesn't feel like just one of you can fit at the stand. Right. Right. And it was just like, I, it just made me so happy that. And Ashley's one of those women that I surround myself with. Yeah. And also if you're one of those women who are listening, who is jealous, that's okay too. That's Cause fair. that's, that's also you telling it's like envy is sometimes you saying what you want. And once you realize that like making someone feel bad or taking them down is literally just bad energy for everything. Right. Like I, everyone has jealous moments. Yeah. I just realized that like, it's like, I learned this thing about like money manifestation. Right. <laughs> I'm so ADD by the way, oh. but I'm, I'm telling you there's a, there's a journey. Money manifestation is like the idea of abundance that like the more money you spend, the more you'll actually make. Cause you're mm -hmm. in this like, positive state of like money moving and growing and right. giving and that so it, that's how I feel about love and energy like yeah. if you're sitting around wishing people bad the universe just sees negativity right so it's like if if you see someone and they do well and you tell them congrats like oh my god it's like a dopamine hit that like they're going to be looking out for you now like yeah. hey I hope Hannah does well too and I just think for people who are jealous like those feelings are human. Right. But also to me, I remember literally saying to you, like, I feel so cool that I have a tattooed friend. And I, that I feel like what I said was basically me saying, hey, like, I'd rather be with you right. than against you, if that makes sure. sense. Yeah. And it's also like, just because the other thing is this, like this girl that sent me this text that like, honestly, it, you know, I, I was in traffic when I opened it. I rear-ended the car in front of me. Like, that's how upset I was. I had to get out. It was the whole thing. It was like the worst night. Like, yeah. It's that's like, a New Yorker's nightmare. Cause I can't even drive. <laughs> I like got out. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's like, uh, anyway, uh, even if she like, honestly, if she were to like reach out, if she were to reach out to me and be like, Hey, you know what? I did this. I'm sorry. It was me being weird. Or even if she didn't mean it, if best case scenario, she just wanted to send me an ugly picture of myself. If she was like, Hey, that was inconsiderate. I'd be like, that's really cool. I'll look past that. Like there's no, just because you act one way doesn't mean that's who you are. Like every single day is like, a also, new bitch, have you ever had a bad photo taken of you, bitch? I'm sorry. Has anyone had a comedy photo taken of them? I've 
never looked good in a stand-up clip on stage ever. I always look like I'm gargling something in my mouth and it's always the most weird positioning and angle because these guys are not out here knowing our angles. They're out here just not action. It's always like below. And then the ones right after where they're like, hey, just sit here. I'm always like, who, I don't know where my hair is. Like they don't, there's no prep and it's, they don't know your angles. I've had some of the worst comedy photos ever. And also comedy photos are bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of this like new, like, okay. I love that I get free headshots all the time, but we also have to know the truth behind it. People are glamorizing it. Like, oh, like, look at this comedy photo I did, but you just bombed. You just bombed. Let's stop pretending you had like such a great night. You bombed. There were three people in the audience. <laughs> and people like, oh my God, I was at this and uh. like, no. <laughs> like, stop with the judging of photos. If it works, it works. Tag the guy and it's amazing and use it to promote your tour. If it's a bad photo, he tried his best and you tried your best. Move the fuck on. I'm sorry. Yeah. You should go through her photos and be like, this one could. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, forgiveness, Hannah, forgiveness. I just went, I just went opposite. No. Of I'm no, also no. Sicilian, so I like revenge, but. I'm Italian too. Oh my God. I totally didn't even. Wait, where in Italy is your family? I, I, don't, I do not know, but. See, I, I'm Sicilian, so I'm, it's like a thing. But I my see. family, they has, has the, the, it's like the passion. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. And the passion is kind of what like makes us, I think, want to be involved in like stand up and like perform and we, yeah, we have intense emotions. Wait, what's time. your actual birthday? August 12th. Also, I'm sorry I've kept you on here for so long. Oh no, it's fine. But can I look your your birthday up in the birthday book? Of course. Or sh- what, sh- what is the birthday book? You've never heard of the birthday book? Is it like other people who have your birthday? No. Oh my god, wait. Please hold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every time I meet someone new, I have the birthday book. <laughs> it's basically like for every day that you bring this on first dates <laughs> <laughs> whenever like a good friend of mine goes on a date with someone they, they text me their birthday they're like send me the page like it's um, it's like an it's it's so good wait I I'm mean, obsessed with this stuff this is it is I mean my dog is getting excited because he feels like <laughs> your dog's like some shit's about to go down sorry baby you're a rescue I don't know when you were born but <laughs> okay you said August 12th August 12th. Do you need the year? No. It's okay. okay. I mean, I'll have to send you the full thing, but um, it's like, so should I read it to you? Yeah. Is this too much? I'm no. too much. I'm out of my fucking Stop. Mind. Stop. That voice is not your voice. That is someone when you were younger telling you you're too much. I need my fucking birthday book now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, Natalie whipped out the birthday book. This is getting out of hand. Okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, it's a bit long. It's fine. All right, August 12th, the day of convention. And tell me if it's accurate. Don't lie to me. Okay, okay. Okay. Those born on August 12th are keepers of tradition and intent on asserting themselves in their particular field of expertise. Theirs is the task of preserving old wisdom, laws, and techniques essential to the mastery of their craft. (laughs) My dog is wagging his (laughs) tail. You must do this a lot. He's like, it's time. It's birthday time. (laughs) He always thinks it's going to be for him. And you're like, no, we don't know where you came from. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Highly successful people born on this day recognize few equals, but remain hungry for any new information hitherto unknown to them and will spare no trouble or expense to acquire such knowledge. That knowledge to them is is power is clearly evidenced in their attitude and lifestyle. August 12th people are also aware of the power in inherent in timeless rules and laws. Yet only the less highly evolved types born on this day stubbornly insist on following tradition blindly. Hmm. More highly evolved August 12th people build on tradition and culture in order to blaze new trails, innovate, make technical improvements, and generally advance themselves and those close to them. For them, tradition is a living entity. It lives hmm. in them and in their work. But although they embody conventions, they must not be assumed to be conservative or reactionary. Those born on this day know that understanding history, ritual, family background, and cultural tradition frees one to make choices, to keep what is desirable, and discard what's not. Ignorance dooms one to repeat mistakes. The lives of August 12 people are often lived at a frenetic pace. (laughs) Undeniably drawn to precarious situations, their energy can easily get out of balance. (laughs) Thus, That's so true. (laughs) They run the risk of health breakdowns and of wearing others out, particularly mates, family, and friends. Their (laughs) colleagues... That's me on reality TV. My mom's like, I can't do this anymore, bitch. I can't. 
Their colleagues may begin to resent their assumed infallibility. Indeed, August 12th people are capable of arousing jealousy and animosity of all sorts and even may come to be regarded as snobs or tyrants. Yay. <laughs> With a deeper understanding of their own power and a tempering of their dominant and sometimes intolerant attitudes, those born on this day can be even more successful in their work. In diminishing tyrannical tendencies in their personality, August 12th people engender a healthier respect and reduce resentment in others. For many born on this day, becoming less aloof and dropping a hierarchy of values concerning people will be a major step in their evolution towards higher spiritual values and true humanity. Valuative terms in particular must be carefully examined by them and periodically defined, redefined in a new light or scrapped together. I'm obsessed. That's it. That's your page. In the, there's another page, but I'll, I'll spare you. Yeah, I know. I'm obsessed because it's right. Is it? It nailed it. It, it is think- always a bit harsh. It is always a bit harsh. No, no, no. It nailed it. I, I, I was like, okay, I don't want to just be like, oh, this person's awesome. Like, I want to know what the cons are. Right. I think what comes in terms of tradition, it's almost like, I want my family to be proud of me. Like, I know that. But then I'm like, I, I want to be an entrepreneur and do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And then I do do like weird risky things that obviously the people around me get affected by. <laughs> and then it's funny how the end was like, once you stop fighting the like hierarchy, which is like, again, like the social status or like social, like, it's like, I could just live my life trying to be a reality star and get any followers and money I can, right. but like I'll be dead right. inside. And then like, instead it's getting in touch with like what really makes you happy and what brings you joy. So that's what I got from that. I love that. Oh man. He... Do you Wait, hear what him? what dog do you have? He's like a, you know, hold on. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with his eyebrows. I'm obsessed with him. Oh my God. I love how you're like, you're rescue. You don't have a birthday, bitch. Oh um, my, my page literally says that like, I'm a relationship addict. Yeah, yeah. And it also, it was like, it said that I don't pay enough attention to social hierarchies. And then in my head, I always thought it was like, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, social climb. But then I was like, no. I, I do the opposite. I don't care if someone's a loser, I'll still be friends with them. And that's my problem. Like, I don't think about like, I don't think about like, oh, this person is someone that I want to be inspired by. Let me be friends with them because they're doing really well. I don't think that way enough. It's also like, when you say, oh, someone's a loser, I want to be friends with them. It's when you say loser, it could also mean like, oh, why is it so easy to be friends with this person? Like, do do they want to be friends with me for the right reasons? I don't necessarily mean someone's like social climbing you, but like also like, are they just getting close to you because they want to talk shit about you? Are they getting close to you because they're jealous? And are they getting close to you? Just bad energy. Exactly. Because they're, yeah, it's being aware of like the toxic shit going on. And it's hard to break up relationships, friendships. It's like as hard as as romantic sometimes. Right. But- Look at us learning about friendships and stuff. Oh my God, Hannah, I can't keep you any longer. I'm, <laughs> is, there, is there anything else that you, I could literally talk to you all. I'm like, this is the best, the best day ever. I could literally talk to you oh, all day. Oh my God, thank you. Um, no, I'm, I'm so excited for like our comedy journey because I feel yes. like, like you're so, so fucking funny and so confident and you have just a natural presence that like can't be taught. And I just think that like, we're going to do big things. That's what I'm manifesting for us. Yes. Um, and I also think for any of my people that are listening, you have to follow Natalie because she's the shit. And um, if people want to see me live, check out my tour at hannahburner.com. I'm coming to a bunch of cities and listen to my podcast, Burning in Hell and Giggly Squad. And lastly, follow me at Being Burns everywhere. Oh. Thanks, Hannah. You're the best. (laughs) Thank you, Nat. You are the best. I just called you. Thanks for listening to Help with Natalie Cuomo. Tune in next week for another episode. Find us on social media at Help with Natalie.